Now we're going to wrap up the book with section 12.2, which is going to address um, linear regressions, but it's going to be for data that does not have a linear pattern. And what we need to do is learn how can you take nonlinear pattern data in a scatter plot and linearize it so it becomes linear. Um, so in 12.2a, the first one we're going to talk about is using transformations involving power functions to achieve linearity for a relationship between two variables. So ultimately, could we then do a linear regression analysis on it in terms of a test or a confidence interval like we did in 12.1? So when associations between two data sets that are quantitative are nonlinear, we have two approaches that we can take to model the association. We can either transform it to straighten it out and make it linear, or we could do a different type of regression like quadratic or exponential. Well, I'm going to tell you our book is not about method two. We are not going to address any of that. That's more of an algebra concept. We're going to be focusing more on how to straighten it out and make it linear. Let's focus on how do you do number one. Well, to transform data, what we're going to do is uh, restate it in a different format. You can do one of two things when we're talking about power functions. Um, and what power functions are, anything that's raised to like x squared or x cubed or x to the fourth. What you would do is you would raise x to a power or a number, or you would take the square root of y. So in a power model, it's the relationship between two variables are in this format. And let me just show you. So what you could see um, if this is considered the power format, where really all we're looking at is if this p-value changes. Here's a real easy example, quadratic. That is to the second power. So in this case, if we have a scatter plot looking at this pattern, we can actually reverse the pattern by either taking the square root of this and making it linearized. Now, this would also be considered a power function. It's just raised to a negative 2 power, um, which typically we wouldn't write negative exponents. Remember, in Algebra 2, we'd bring it down, and this would be considered a rational function. So we could look at polynomial functions, which are raised to positive integers. We could look at rational functions that have the positive integer on the bottom of a fraction, or in that case, a negative exponent, same thing. Or we could look at radicals, which could also be exponents that are fractions. So exponents that are fractions can be written as square roots, and those are just called radicals. Um, and we're going to talk about the approach, how do you take curved data and straighten it out. Now let's talk more, if you have a power model, how would you transform it? Do know the other model I'm going to show you is what if you have a logarithmic model, we have a second transformation, and then we pretty much wrap up the section. So let's go back to power though. What you're going to do, basically one of these two methods. You're either going to raise x to a certain power, or you're going to take the square root of y. And you can just kind of play around with it and see which one works better. Now, when would one of these come into play versus the other? If we look at a power model, or in this case a polynomial, uh, these two, this function here, area, for a circle, area equals pi r squared. Um, if we wanted to, by the way, we could just change it to x and y. Fine, same thing. y equals pi x squared. Same concept, but just changing the variables. What we could do is if we plot what the data looks like for this particular pattern. So what they did, they, put, they chose 1 through 7, they put it in for x here, and they figured out what its corresponding y was. This here represents all the ordered pairs for this particular model. And as if you look at it, it actually looks like it has a curvature to it. It's coming up kind of the right-hand side of a parabola. So here's the deal. There's two different methods they could try. They can either raise x to a power, or they can take the square root of y. I'm going to show you method A, which corresponds with raising x to the power. So they took our input, which is r, and instead of just regular r for the ordered pairs, like 1, 2, 3, and 4, they're going to do r squared. Again, if you want to use x and y, they're going to take the x and do x squared. So what I did is I'm coming up with a brand new scatter plot. I took my list 1, and I squared those values, which gave me list 3. So this really is my new input, or my x's. So I'm going to take just my x values and square them but I'm going to keep the corresponding list 2. If you graph the relationship where here I have list 3 and then list 2, so I have my basically my x squared and I kept my y originally. 
If you look at this, you're going to notice it's actually stretched out and it's becoming more linear. So I actually linearized the data. Now, the question is, maybe I should have done method B. Should I go in instead and take the square root of y? So what I'm going to do is still keep the regular r values right here. So I'm going to keep my original list 1. I'm not going to change that. But I'm just going to take the answers that I had originally and take the square roots of those. So take my area answers and take the square root. So when I do that, what you're going to see graphed here is I'm taking my original list 1, which is right here, and this is my list 1 or my x's. I kept it original because that's what it said. But then I'm going to take these a values, my original area answers or my y's, and I'm going to take the square root of them. Well, I did. I put it right here in list 4. So what I did is I graphed list 4 or the square roots of y's. And when you do that, you're going to notice this curvature actually gets pulled and becomes more linear. That is, I linearized it. So the ultimate question is, well, which of the two methods was better? Was it A or B? Ultimately, what I could do is I would go in and I could analyze the situation and come up with which one is better. But all I really want you to take away from here is realize how I made the curve data linear. Now, you might ask, why did I choose to go in and in method A, remember I took my x's and I raised it to a power. Why did I raise it to the power of 2? And in method B here, it says take the root of y. What I did is I took the square root of that. Well, look at my original function. My original function or equation in here deals with the squaring or a second degree polynomial. Well, would that change how I might linearize if I didn't have an r squared? Yes. Let's look at this volume down here. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now if I take all of my, if I take r from 1 to 7 as my x is and I put it in here and I get volume, I could go ahead and get xy ordered pairs and graph it. It's going to have a curve to it. To linearize it, I have two options. I can either take my existing x values and cube them because I'm looking at this relationship or I'm going to take my, my final volume answers and take the cube root of them. What you're trying to do is kind of reverse out the polynomial impact that's happening to your equation to move the curvature to become more linear. So let's play around with this example. Child mortality and, in and income. What does a country's under five child mortality rate, uh, which is going to be per 100,000 birth births, tell us about the income per person for residents of that country? So what they did is we are going to have a scatter plot of a random sample of 14 countries between 2009. Here's the data. Um, for these 14 countries, we have the income per person, the average income, and this is the mortality rate of kids under 5. Again, it's every 1,000 children, so this would say 4.4 uh, kids and 1,000 are going to die if they're under the age of 5. Here's the income. Um, notice here for uh, Niger, uh, 160 kids out of 1,000 are going to die, but there's their average income. If you go into the calculator and do list one and list two, and you do a linear regression model, this is the equation you were going to end up coming up with. We'll have to get the y-intercept and the slope, but what it is, we're going to choose to use uh, under five mortality rate as our explanatory variable, and the income will be the response. So can we use mortality rates of these children to determine the average income of a particular country. So what you see here on the scatter plot is uh, this curvature relationship. Let's talk about what we see in terms of DAFs. Well, here's what I would say. There's, the scatter plot shows a strong negative association, but clearly it's nonlinear. We definitely see almost like an exponential decay function, it looks like. Um, so it's more of a rational function type of pattern. What it looks like we're seeing here, and you wouldn't necessarily have to know this, but let me just give you some insight. It's more like a rational function, and it looks like 1 over x uh, would look like if we were to graph it. It's really what we would see in quadrant 1 if we put this in a graphing calculator. So I ask, what kind of power model might this be? Again, don't worry so much with having to figure that out. Your ultimate goal is going to have to know if it's more of a power model or a logarithmic model, and we'll talk more about that in the later videos. But what kind of power model might it be? It appears to be a hor with horizontal and vertical asymptotes, possibly a reciprocal relationship between income and mortality. So what that is, it's really a power of negative 1 
because remember, y equals x to the negative 1 is the same as saying y equals 1 over x, which is that this rational function we see up here. The reason that's helpful is because it's going to give us an idea of how we can try to linearize this data and reverse the curvature impact. Because we're dealing with this relationship of 1 over x, they're going to say, okay, let's go into the x values and try to reverse it. So let's do use 1 over x instead of our regular x's. And then maybe go to the y's, and instead of using the y as the output, do 1 over y. So here's what the two possible transformations would give us. First transformation says, let's just take the actual x data, which we see right here, and do 1 over x. Let's do the reciprocal of it. So what they did is they took this data, which used to be list 1, and then they just took 1 over list 1. And they got the new values. These are basically the transformed x's. So then they took, and they called it reciprocal under 5. So this is really 1 under 5. They took those new values as x, and then they took the corresponding y and graphed it. It definitely looks less um, curved, and it looks a little bit more linear. I'm not strong, sure how strong of a linear relationship it is, but it does exist there. Now, because they did that, you think about the predicting model. Uh, the model that they predicted, they kept the y's the same, so I'm going to say income hat, but the x value was not under 5 anymore on the top level. They changed it to 1 under 5. So they've kind of changed with the equation and how it would be impacted. Now, if you take this new scatter plot of data and do a linear regression on it, the calculator is going to kick back a y-intercept and an actual slope value. Remember, though, what we did is this was moved to the bottom. So this is the new predicted model. By the way, this is a residual plot that comes with it. So we can analyze if we think it's good or not. Now, I'm not sure... It, to analyze this by itself is that great, let's compare it to a second model. What if, instead of transforming the x's, we went and transformed the y's? Will that give us more of a linear pattern? So what they did here instead is now they kept list 1, the x's, as the current value, and they took our old list 2, and instead of keeping list 2, they're going to do 1 over list 2, which will actually give them 1 over the value of income. Now, so you're going to notice here, mortality rate is still the same. This is the reciprocal of income, or it's 1 over the income. Just comparing the two scatter plots um, under the second transformation compared to the first, I would say by far this transformation looks more superior in creating more of a true, stronger linear relationship. Um, and that's how you have to do it. You just have to look at the scatter plots and you look at the residual plots. But I think the scatter plot alone is going to tell us this would be the better transformation.